Hello guys, welcome to Shubro the Geek. I am your host Shubro. Welcome to day three of Python tutorial series where we we learn Python fast and professionally. So guys, I have promised to teach enough basic Python to you guys so that you can code like a professional Python programmer. So without further ado, let's jump on to VS Code where I have written all the codes like the previous day. So it will save much time. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you what has happened to me and how how sick I was so that I, I couldn't make these videos uh, in the last week. So without further ado, let's move to VS Code and we'll talk over there. So guys, now we are in VS Code, Visual Studio Code today. <laughs> I, today is the first day I made it correct. So <clears throat> what is the agenda of today's class? So in today's class, what we will be discussing is functions, how functions helps us, how functions does uh, the reusability of code, how we can reuse a code using function and uh, how function uh, are treated as a first class object or how functions are first class objects. So these are the main things and I will talk about basic to moderate level of function, all the things which you need uh, about function basic to moderate level. And all the codes which I'll be sharing over here using as an example will is linked in the GitHub page below. And if you have any query, please do comment. And if you want some personal uh, solutions to your query, you can follow me on my social media handles, which are also linked below my Facebook, Instagram and Twitter or Twitter. Anything you, you can follow over there and you can just give me a uh, you can just send me a message saying that you have this issues and that issues. I will directly solve it over there. So guys, yeah, the thing which I wanted to, which I never said in the last video is, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Please hit the bell notification icon so that you get notified each and every time I post a new video. This is my passion of posting new videos and new content to you guys. So uh, please do support by giving me a like and sharing it with your friends. Uh, so without further ado, let's start. So what is a function? A function is a block of code which takes a value as an input and processes that value according to the instructions given and gives an output. So say for example, this phone is your function. So you give an input value. This has some instructions written inside it and it will process the value and it will give an output. So based on this concept or this definition, a function can be divided into two parts, pure functions and impure functions. Pure functions are those in which the function returns a value and impure functions are those in which the functions does not return a value. So I think I'm clear and I have given both the, I have given all the definitions over here, which I'll be talking. So you do not need to worry. So what is the syntax of writing a function in python so in python we write a function by specifying or giving the keyword def then the function name and then we give a uh, bracket of arguments so it can have zero to an infinite number of arguments if you want and then we give a colon and indentation and we write the function statements so for pure function i have written an example of pure function in pure function over here so pure function is it, it is accepting two values, it is adding those two values and it is returning the value uh, of the sum or the sum of the two numbers which, which it is adding and it is returning to where from where the function has been called. A function is being called and it gives the value or it executes the statements which are written inside it and in impure function uh, the example it, it also accepts two values and it, it also finds a sum but it prints the value. So when it is printing the value, it is called an impure function. And when it is passing a value to another function or to the calling function or to from where it is called, <coughs> we can say that uh, those are pure functions. So let's take the first example that is adding two numbers. So let's paste it over here. So guys, this error which is which has been occurring from last two to three days. Uh, this is nothing but this is showing because uh, it says I do not have pip installed, but I actually have pip installed in my system, but it's not 
uh, taking that pip uh, file, I don't know why. So let's just ignore it. So let's save it. So we are, in this function, we are taking two variables inside the function parameter. It's called the function parameter. And we are adding those two numbers and printing the value of that number. So let me, uh, let me write this thing. What are the function parameters? So def This is called function signature. So, args in this basically the upper args, the args over here is called function para because. So I think I'm clear over here. This is, this is called function parameters, and this is the function signature. Function signature is nothing but function name with the this is function name with the list of arguments, and function uh, parameters is the list of arguments which we pass inside the function. So in this function, add add is the function name and this def keyword is a keyword which we need to tell the python interpreter that this is a function or else it won't understand so it's a, it's like a naming convention say for example i am called shubro so uh, when someone calls me shubro i understand that he is he or she is calling me and if he calls me by another name i won't be understanding that he or she is calling me so that's the basic difference which which we have so <coughs> add that is the name and then we have A and B. So my name is Shubro and Python understands like Python has different objects. Okay. So function is a type of object also. So how will it understand that? Okay. This is a function object. So how we humans understand that we are humans. That's a dog. That's a cat. That's a bull. This is a phone. So these are all objects. So how we understand we see them. And in uh, interpreter, Python interpreter does not see them. It it, it reads the values. It reads the uh, these keywords. And it understands, and uh, it it does the work which is uh, which is written inside it. So we are passing two values inside this function add a and b. And in C, we are uh, we are first adding those two numbers a and b and storing the value in C. As I told you in the last class, that uh, always the right side is executed first, then the left side. So uh, our first this thing will, uh, will be added. And it will be stored in C, and in third line it will just print the value of the sum, or it will print the value of C. That is the sum of the two, those two numbers. And how to call a function? Now this function is written. How to call it? So we call a function by uh, giving the name of the function, and then passing the parameters a uh, five and ten. When we pass those parameters, it calls the function, and with the values. So it will pass these values to this function, uh, and it will. Give the output, okay? And I have written actual arguments and formal arguments. So, from the place where we are passing a value to the function, at that place, uh, uh, the arguments which are passed are called actual arguments. And uh, at the uh, place where the function is defined, at that place where the values are accepted, are called formal arguments. These are naming conventions which are given, and we'll we'll know a lot about it. What are formal arguments? Uh, what are formal parameters and actual parameters? When uh, we'll be doing a uh, lot more about functions and classes after the seven classes. So uh, hold on to that and stay tuned. I will be posting very good news after this uh, seven, those seven, this seven classes, and you'll be learning a lot of things. We'll be learning a lot of things, new things, and very good things. So stay tuned. Please follow me and please subscribe to my channel. I'll be announcing it on my Twitter, Facebook, and Twitter and Facebook handles, and also over here a bit later over here. So follow me over there to know more. And I post a lot of things regarding this over there. So please follow me if you are interested in machine learning, deep learning. I post a lot of content over there regarding those. Please follow me to get those kind of contents. And in LinkedIn also, you can follow me in my LinkedIn profile. So let's run this code and let's see what this prints. So it will print 15 over here. So we, I think we are clear over here. So this is an example of a pure function or impure function. This is an example of an impure function. 
So why impure function? Because it, it prints a value and it does not return any value the place from where it was called. So now let's check another example. Another example of impure function. Let's let's be clear with this concept of impure function, then we'll go move on to the pure functions and all. So we know how to find even and odd. So a number is said to be even or a number is said to be odd if if the number is divisible by 2 then it is seven said as even and if the number is not divisible by 2 then it is said as odd. So last uh, at, the, at the very uh, last class and the previous class also at the first class of our tutorial series I discussed this is this modulo operator. So what this modulo operator does it finds a remainder. So it divides the number n by the number 2 and it finds the remainder of it. So if n is an odd number it will have a remainder. Say for example any odd number 3 that is a very prim primary odd number. So when you divide the number 3 2 times 1 is 2 and uh, 1 is still left in 3. So 3 minus 2 is 1. So the remainder is 1. So that is not a even number that is an odd number. And similarly, when we divide the basic uh, even number that is 2 by 2, so it is completely divisible and its remainder is 0. So it returns the value 0. Thus, we get the even or odd number accordingly. So let me run this. So 21 is an odd number and 24 is an even number. So I think we are clear with this logic also and how this function is working. So I am passing this value over here, it checks okay 21 uh, divisible by 2 is equal to is equal to if, if the remainder of 21 is, is 0 no it's not so it will go to the else part it is printing 21 is an odd number then again i am calling 24 24 divisible by 2 is equal to is equal to 0 yes it is divisible by 2 therefore it's printing 24 is an even number so i think we are clear with this example okay guys sorry for the way it cut uh, let's begin where we left off so we did uh, even odd uh, classification and uh, using a function. Now let us move on to the next example uh, that is checking whether a number is prime or not. Okay. So as we can see, we are in this code we will be checking the prime whether a number is prime or not. We will check that. So how can we do that? We know that by definition, a prime number is a number which is divisible by one and the number itself. So we are basically doing that. So we are checking how many numbers exactly divides a number in between the range one to one number less than the number. If that is exactly one, then it's a prime number. Else, it's not a prime number. So this uh, flag is used for that calculation of how many numbers are uh, divisor, dividing that number n which is uh, being inputted over here. So uh, if n is uh, like last day we talked about range and range works from start to n minus 1. So I have written it over here also. And if n is like if I pass a number 3, 3 is divided divisible by 1, yeah that is equal to 0 that is true. Uh, then flag will be added to 1, then 3 is divisible by 2, no, then it will go to the else part where it will execute the continuous statement. The continue is a very, uh, one of the control statements in uh, Python which you need to remember, this continue, break and uh, pass, these three statements are there only. So we will talk about them in, in later classes. For now you remember continue, what continue does, it, it moves the uh, uh, iteration like uh, if the uh, I, is value is 2 now, it will move the is value to uh, 3 when this, this uh, condition is executed and all the conditions below it will, will not be seen. Okay? So that is what continue does and break in uh, on the other hand breaks the, uh, breaks the iteration of the loop and pass passes the control. Like if, if it was in the else part then it will pass the control to if uh, now for the for loop but if, if pass was written in the if part over here then it will pass the control to the next next uh, set of commands. So it will be else over here. So we are checking if flag is equals to 1 uh, then we are printing prime or else we are printing not prime. So let me give you a very big number 9678342121. Let us save it and see if it is a prime number or not. Not a prime number. So we can have this number 93 is a prime number if I am not wrong. 
let's check this if 93 is a prime number not prime ah i forgot 93 is also not a prime number 97 more or less is a prime number i think yep see others it will show like that so i can show you another part like uh, the faster the one of the faster approaches is uh, to go from 2 start from 2 since that's the minimum even prime number and if any number which divides this number like we, if any number above 2 and less than the number itself uh, divides the number then it, it, it is a like a it is it, it is not a prime number so it, it is having a factor except 1 and the number itself it is having a factor if, if, if it does so it is a much greater uh, greater uh, condition so here we are giving the break statement so break statement will break the execution of the loop so see yeah not a prime number okay flag has to be zero sorry for that not a prime number yeah not a prime uh, it's a prime number 97 is a prime number okay then what we can do what we can do yeah we can even improve the speed of this so if a uh, we can go to up to n by 2 for checking prime number if it goes to n by 2 then like if half of the numbers if half of the numbers are not prime if half of the numbers are not divisible then the other half is exact more or less so that part won't divide and if it divide this part divides then uh, that part will divide therefore uh, we can say that it's not a prime number and this is a, this is much more stronger concept oh, okay uh, this doesn't go so we can do that i told you like just we can we need to convert it to a take the integer part that will do yeah it will give us a prime number so it's a much more uh, robust step to use this now let me modify this i will add this again over there okay control c control x let me do that so it's over here so when you will be seeing it you will have this thing also so now let's get back to the factorial uh, no i we haven't discussed the factorial no? so let's start with the factorial so this is one of the very basic examples and each and every language when we start we start with this example that's a factorial of a number so factorial of a number we find it as the number the product of all the numbers starting from that number to one so if we are saying factorial of five then we will be multiplying five into four into three into two into one six is five uh, six into five into four into three into two into one and so on seven for seven for nineteen for two hundred same same logic applies so we are finding the factorial of a number so oh, we are using uh, we are defining this function fact of n n is the variable which it will be accepting and factorial is a variable over here it's a local variable so i will talk about local and global variable just in few minutes so just you understand that uh, this uh, variable factorial is present inside this function fact and while n is greater than uh, i told you the product should be from n to uh, to the number to 1 n to 1 so we'll start from n so we'll start from the number which is passed uh, to the function that is n is passed to the function and we'll move to 1 so we are multiplying this is nothing but equal to factorial is equals to factorial into n so this can be written in short form like this and similarly this can also be written i am decreasing uh, the number after each and every step so after this is calculated this uh, while loop runs so i will return the value of factorial see now if i pass 5 5 into so it was 1 uh, factorial 1 is equal so always the right side first so right side will be factorial into n that's 1 into 5 so if we give 0 some anything multiplied by 0 will be 0 that's why we give 1 so 5 into 1 is 1 uh, 5 into 1 is 5 then we decrease 5 by 1 that's 4 now so 5 into 4 then 3 then 2 then 1 this way this will happening and this will return the value and this is a pure function since this returns a value this is a pure function and pure function if we write just the fact of 5 so what will happen is that uh, this will print nothing 
actually because it has returned a value and we haven't accepted the value or we haven't printed the value so how will we do that we just print the value print is a function in which we pass the function itself so function uh, this this uh, this this is uh, think as like uh, this uh, fact of 5 will return a value which will be printed uh, using the print function a function can be uh, passed as an argument to another function and th that value which is returned from that function is used as a <coughs> uh, variable is used as an object so we will we will be learning that that that's uh, that's why we what we call is function is known as a first class object so we will learning le learning that so let's run this so let's increase the size of this yeah see 120 is the factorial of 5 so it is printing and nothing will be printed over here as i told you so let's begin with something i told you just right function as class objects so let me copy all the thing yeah so i told you function can be treated as a first class argument so if our if anything is treated as a first class argument or first class object then how what what are the functions uh, what are the things which which we can expect or what are the things what are the special properties it shows number one it shows the property that the value which is returned from the function can be stored or the value which is returned can be stored in another variable so if i if i say that fact of 7 if we directly write this fact of 7 it will store it will store the value of, of uh, factorial of 7 in in this number i haven't printed it now sorry for that print okay so it will uh, it will store the value in first and when we print the first it will it will directly print the value and uh, now in second what we are doing we are so we need the check prime function over here also so check prime is a function which we which we just discussed few minutes back and now this function checks uh, for the if our number is prime or not so what what we will do we will uh, we will calculate the factorial of 6 and check whether that number is prime or not so how how we can do that uh, we will directly pass the uh, function inside the parameter of another function so that's the power of python and it is a very beauty beauty which we can see uh, in higher level languages actually so let's run this yeah so ignore this part this part so uh, i i think i should exclude this part first okay so let's run it again so see we found out uh, the like uh, the factorial of 5 was 120 and the factorial of 7 which we just found out uh, in the first variable over here that is 540 so we, it's completely correct and then uh, then we have found out that so using this we have found out that uh, factorial of 6 and pass the factorial of 6 into a check prime function and this check prime function has a term not prime since a uh, factorial of 6 is 720 it, it will not return a prime number 720 is not a prime number and this none is printed why this none is printed see what happens is uh, second now now refers to a function object so it, it is showing a none because its memory address is showing a none value to, to the interpreter of python that's a very advanced concept you don't need to understand so this none will be printed that's nothing that can be ignored that can completely be ignored so what we can do if we do this i think then we will ignore over here oh. okay so that won't ignore none but none you you just ignore the that none is coming out that's nothing to worry so let's move on to the thing which i have written uh, earlier so we showed like uh, two two ob uh, two main properties of a first class object that is uh, it can be stored in a variable the value return can be stored in a variable the value can be passed as a parameter to another function and now <coughs> a function can be defined inside a function that's also a property of first class objects so let's clear this we don't need this anymore no sorry we need the factorial factorial because i i love the factorial function that's why everything over here is 
Jamen, der er ikke lidt bange andre faktorer for. Okay. So we can define n number of functions inside a function. We can define function inside a function inside a function inside a function. We can uh, as far as your imagination goes, but it will uh, clog your system. That's a different thing. But we can do this. So we can uh, define a function inside a function. So that's a property of uh, of a first class object, which which function is and it shows. So say for example, uh, we need to print this message as TG YouTube channel, Shubhru the Geek YouTube channel. Uh, so it it uh, we are calling this message a function from we are defining exactly this message function inside the function. <coughs> so what uh, what a first class object can do it can in a first class object we can define one function inside another function so this here i have shown an example called display function display function accepts a string in a string as its uh, uh, accepts a string as its uh, parameter and it, uh, one function defined the, the message message is a function which is defined inside the uh, function display we can define n number of functions inside a function or we can write a uh, function inside a function inside a function uh, as long as your imagination goes but it will clog up your system so uh, remember that and uh, do it wisely so if you want we can do this and this is a uh, this is called um no this is not basic but this is a moderate level of python functions so this this two things are moderate level python functions so i wanted to discuss so as i told you earlier uh, so dev display message message is over here now uh, when i am calling this uh, message message is this function and adding it it will return this stg youtube channel and add it with the message which we will pass and to return the result we will display the result let's see what it's returning okay So welcome to the STG YouTube channel. It will return this and print it. So that's the main thing. See, it's uh, it is there. Uh, it is uh, broken into two functions. I'm passing welcome to from here. So welcome to is over here, and now STG YouTube channel will come from this message part. Okay. So this is the main thing which is done, and uh, <coughs> it is uh, displaying welcome to STG YouTube channel. So now let's move on to the part which I just cut. Okay. so what we was saying uh, returning a function from the function so we saw passing a function to a function we can also return a function to form a function so that can be done very easily what we have to do is uh, here here you can see i have defined two functions mass which prints welcome to the mass and dis display uh, which returns the mass function so what happens when when this line is executed it it calls the mass function and the uh, and the statements which are inside the mass function it, it is executed and when it is executed uh, uh it is returned over here returned to the control which is from the display function and where the display function is being called at that place it will send the value so again this is a moderate level python code so we can directly access the value we can directly assign the value to a variable now if we print the variable it will have the return address of this mass function so we we, we don't need the return address of this mass function what we need we need the what is inside the uh, uh, this value so what why this uh, parenthesis are given so uh, uh, this parenthesis are given because display has a function inside it so when we give this parenthesis after the the display thing the uh, we pass the display function in the val uh, val variable and this val variable when when we when we execute or when we try to utilize or when we try to print we pass the parenthesis blank parenthesis so it will directly refer to the function inside that uh, va va value since a function is an object so i can directly access a part of an object which may be another object that's that's a different issue but uh, since it's a part of an object we can directly access that object so that's being done nothing else you see this is this is storing this is showing the hexadecimal address of where this mass function is stored this mass function is stored and uh, finally this printing okay so let's move on to the last uh, thing which i have cut over here and then we'll move on to the new examples 
so what i have done is uh, there are two types of ways there are there are two ways by which we can call a function that is call by value or call by reference so call by value is you directly pass the value to the uh, parameters of a function and you call it and you directly store it inside or directly print it uh, if we directly print it also that's not an issue so we can do this this is call by value when we are utilizing a value to call the function or call the uh, send values di directly to the parameters of the function and uh, call by reference is uh, is another concept when when we uh, we store that in inside a variable and uh, we pass that variable to the function what what happens is uh, the address or the memory location where the vari variable uh, or value of the variable is stored that is passed and that address location is then used and basically that address location is then fetched and from that address location the value is fetched and that is used so it's nothing but uh, one one in one coin call by value we pass the value in call by reference we pass the variable that you need to remember basically it came from uh, c and uh, other languages like previous language c c++ where i needed to pass the uh, address and in python since everything is an object everything can be passed as an uh, 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 an object can uh, store uh, addresses so when we pass an object it generally passes an address only so that's the main thing you remember this value when we say call by value we we use a number over here or a integer or any any value we say uh, may be it any a, any data type uh, and um, when we pass when we say call by reference we call it by a reference of a variable like in in the the value is stored in a, in some kind of variable and we pass that so when we execute this so it will give the same result because the same thing is being done but one is by calling call by reference and another one is by call by a value so i think i was able to clear uh, this part then let's move on let's clear this yeah let's move on so up to reference we did okay now we will be talking about positional arguments keywords argument this thing completely so what uh, there is a concept called positional argument so in in functions when we pass value and it is in some kind of order we can see that order is maintained when we pass the value say for example we pass the value uh, here we can see that example of a function called attach so what it does it it concatenates two strings okay this attach function concatenates two strings s1 and s2 in a third string called s3 and it prints the uh, for it prints the uh, s3 prints a variable s3 uh, uh, without changing the position so uh, if if this thing is reversed like when uh, now how what happens is stg and youtube uh, these two things uh, are passed so when these two things are passed stg will be passed to s1 only and not s2 and uh, youtube will be passed to s2 only and not s uh, s1 so when we run this code what happens first time it will show stg youtube then it will show youtube stg since i have added in a reverse order now i will change something youtube stg uh, uh, stg youtube now let's do one thing let's change the positional position of this two from the calling calling function only okay so what will happen control v so what will happen now this will be returned first youtube uh, stg then stg youtube will be done see so this is called positional arguments the arg position of the arguments which are being passed as the actual parameter to the formal parameters it's always fixed so that's called the positional argument i hope this was clear let's move on to the next part mm, okay so keyword argument well, what do we mean by that a keyword argument so in keyword argument we mean nothing but 
each and every argument is a keyword which represents what what its value uh, is to be doing in this in, inside the function so what happens is uh, say for here we are calculating simple interest so simple interest requires principal rate and time so we are calculating just simple interest is equals to prt by 100 and uh, i have multiplied 12 because i am passing the time to, uh, in months so we have calculated the simple interest and just printed it so while calling we can we can do that we can do this thing that we can uh, this are called keyword arguments since while calling we can write it like this we can write the keyword which is present over there equal to a value and uh, this will call the function and do the work respectively this is this is a very good way to un, to remember like what this function say for example you have defined a function in a different class and you wanted to call it like say if, um, meaning uh, this this is a concept which we will be discussing but you for now you remember like when we when we want to want to express more things through our function and make this function understandable more to the people for whom we write since we are coders we want to express our feelings or express the answer of a answer of solution express the solution of a problem to the community so this is the very good way to do it okay so let's save it and run it let's clear this yeah so to to certify that that that's the value which is calculated so this is what uh, keyword argument is let's let's uh, keep this example then we will uh, talk about default arguments so default arguments sometimes when say for example sometimes you you, you designed a code and you have uh, your uh, the persons who are using it sometimes forgets to give other other variables like there are three variables but they pass one variable so what we do we we set some default values so when this values this values are passed like uh, this values are not passed so what will happen this this values will be utilized and the thing will be calculated now if any of the values is passed nothing it will override the value see so this one rate and time is same and the principal was same so this one uh, would be equal to the above if if this this default value was taken but since this value is passed and i told when this value is passed this will be updated so what happens is it changes it it updates and not takes a default value and if no value since see for example time we have passed no value and it takes a default value of time to be 12 or 1 year so i hope this one was also clear now let's move on to yeah so variable length arguments is very important i feel So what is variable length argument? Say for example, all of a sudden you you wanted to design something, but you only knew that uh, okay, one variable I know I need to pass, and the remaining variables how many numbers I don't know. So what will happen over here? Uh, you in uh, other languages uh, you needed to uh, build an array of sort, and you needed to pass. So in Python, what we do we we just pass the args variable. So args variable will accept star args variable will accept not args star args or ampers, uh, asterisk args this will accept all the variables except the first one so first one will be passed to the first variable only and the remaining all the variables will be passed in the uh, asterisk args variable so when when this this thing is done so this is called a tuple <coughs> if i'm not mistaken this is known as tuple unpacking operator so we will discuss it in uh, in later videos but uh, for now you, you remember this if we don't know the exact number of uh, variables and we do not want to pass an array of n size which is uh, which we don't know like how many size will be there so what we will do we will uh, pass this star uh, asterisk args uh, variable and this asterisk args variable will store all the values except the values which we have defined like a i have i may have defined b over here uh, and except all the values will be defined in that part so i have done a sum uh, sum function over here but you can do any kind of function which you like so let's run this see so 5 plus 6 is let me 
yeah move it so 5 plus 6 is 11 5 plus 6 plus 7 is 18 5 plus 6 plus 32 plus 45 is 95 and so on so forth this will be this this uh, from in the first case the star arcs took the only 6 in the second case excuse me it took two took two variables in the third case it took four variables and it, it can take n number of variables no issues whatsoever so this was a very good concept and very important concept which we use a lot in python and you can use this this uh, concept in in most of the codes in python and it will help you go miles if uh, for me it has done and it will help you i think now the last topic we will be talking today is local and global variable so just now in previous in a few minutes back uh, like i talked about the local variable or lo local variable so what is a local variable local variable is some any variable whose scope or access of that variable is limited to the part where the colon is started uh, if if i am defining so basically it is it is it is like the place or the area up till which a variable can be accessed so here uh, local variables in python you can understand as when we are giving a variable inside a function the scope of the variable is up till the end of the function so the function starts with uh, the colon the uh, function statement start with a colon and ends after the indentation is uh, omitted like the def indentation is omitted definition indentation is omitted so what happens is the scope of the variable limits over here only now uh, this this is what local variable is now global variable so global variable is a variable which can be accessed by different functions so let me talk about def pg so let's define this function and add this function no issues so let's do this control c sorry So what happens is I have changed the value of the variable value over here to 20 and it was 23 at the very beginning. So let's see how, how it will do. So what is global variable? Global variable is a variable whose scope is limited to this file, this test.py anywhere from any function can access this test.py. So what we need to do, we need to write global value in, in, in uh, before using it so that it understands that I am using this global variable so global is the keyword which specifies to the python interpreter thus that i am using a global variable uh, and the global variable called value uh, up till now in in this in this example so let's run this okay see this value is referenced below uh, ref the local variable value reference before assignment so what happens over here i haven't got any any like uh, any i haven't defined value anywhere so how it will do so i need to access this value this value can be accessed like from this global value that i just discussed so if we run this now see variable 23 local variable 20 and variable 20 so what happened is uh, when i did this this global value what it did was it 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 called this value the, now this value is a reference to this value only itself and nothing more because i have called the global value so that's why the variable is showing 20 in the second part now if we omit this if we omit this and save it then what will happen it will show the value 23 if i am not mistaken in each case so let's run the code yeah 20 and 23 so see this value is not changing like this value like which happened in the last part so that was like 
beginner to advanced level of uh, functions which you needed to know and uh, another thing okay okay this thing i needed to talk also so function uh, does reusability of code so how reusability of code is done uh, i have uh, written a function for it uh, i have written so say for example we want to uh, make a calculator where until and unless user says to stop it will uh, uh, take two numbers at the very beginning and it will add those two numbers it will find the difference of those two numbers it will multiply those two numbers and find the division of those two numbers until and uh, user says stop so for this each and every time what these are only some uh, some difference so it it was only one line but if uh, if say for example we wanted to do some much more complex thing say for example finding the prime uh, finding the fibonacci series etc etc or finding the multi uh, multiplication of two matrices until the user says stop so that's a huge complex thing and we cannot write each and every time like for for each and every user so what we do we we define it inside a function and we call it from other functions wherever it is necessary okay so this is this has been done over here like uh, i have shown you the four functions like add it is adding sub it is subtracting multiplication and division so now i have defined a main function so guys uh, do this as a practice take this as a practice define all the functions define all the work in different function and you create a main function which will which will call all the functions so main function in all, in any language is the function which which when we when we uh, run the program the first thing that that uh, that a developer checks but python interpreter does not python interpreter does uh, it like a name it checks for the name what happens if we do not give a name for this model if the, this this is not a module then what happens is it's by default given the name main and the thread is called the main thread so if if we can directly call the main thread what will happen is all the things which which we uh, which we want to do we can do it using the main function so this is the main thing like for now you understand uh, whenever you define a uh, yeah, class or function a uh, uh, function a uh, group of functions you use a main function and number 2 at the very end you write if num if double underscore num is equals to main double underscore main so what what this uh, means i will explain it in the in the later parts or later videos and uh, you will understand completely why this one happens and why this one doesn't so i i wrote a simple code like a while true like it is endless loop so uh, i i ask the user to input zero if if they want to stop or uh, any num uh, if if they want to continue they should uh, enter zero or else if they should cont uh, they should enter any other number to stop so let's uh, run this code so for running this code i need terminal because at uh, the very uh, first video i told you guys like uh, for special input output cases what we need uh, what we need is terminal so in terminal we'll be seeing up to c users admin so let me do this uh, cd so it will see up to this so what you need to do is you you go to the basic user directory for that you need to type desktop for me it is desktop for and then a slash sorry for that tutorial then it's a slash and day 3 if i'm not wrong yeah this will not take again because uh it doesn't take strings with a space so what uh, what you need to do is cd let's clear this cls so what you do is cd uh, then you take this thing uh, colon day 3 okay now it will go to day 3 so how will uh, how we run a python program so it is python we write then calculator i have misspelled not py so we want to continue so we press zero so enter a number what number say for example 12 say 3 So sum is fifteen, difference is nine, product is thirty six, quotient is four, 
So we can show each and everything until and unless we press another number. So we press 9, it will exit. So this is a very basic example uh, of reusability of code. Like we can use this code for each and every, uh, any instance. Like say for example, I need to define this sum for five or six instances. So I will define sum for one instance and I will call each and every time that, that instance only. And what is an instance? Instance is nothing but uh, I will call that part only where the sum is defined and what it will do? It will uh, it will bring uh, it will give us the sum uh, variable for like each and every time uh, when we call some function each and every time when we call sorry for that so that's the main thing which I wanted to talk and uh, I hope I was clear with these things and <coughs> so guys uh, why I didn't make the video for one week or past one week so what happened is I I may be I I am suffering from either excessive enlargement of liver, which happened in a very less time, or uh, gall uh, gallstones. So that that was giving me huge like unbearable pain, and I couldn't sit. Last day when I did the video, uh, I just sat. I sat here. I did the video. I I posted the video. And after that, I couldn't get up from bed. I still could, cannot get up. I like s uh, lie down the complete day. I have taken five breaks inside this, uh, and uh, inside this tutorial, uh, this uh, thing I am, which I am making, this tutorial which I am making. Now that that's the way I am like nowadays. I am going on. So that's the main issue which I am facing. And for that, uh, I am extremely sorry that I couldn't provide the content for these days. But uh, I'm promising you guys, like, uh, if if such unbearable things doesn't happen to me, then I'll be posting each and every day, like I have done in previous sessions. So, guys, I think I have been able to clear your doubts regarding Python, uh, this functions in Python. So, if you have any doubts, please comment below. Please uh, ask me your queries. Please, if you if you have any personal queries, if you want any personal suggestions, then. What you can do, you can directly uh, call, uh, you, you can, can directly follow me on my Twitter, on any of the social media handles which are linked below. And for any code which I have uh, written today, that will be linked in the description below. So you guys can follow it and uh, please practice it. So I have the aim of, uh, we have the aim of learning Python in seven days, basic Python in seven days, so that we can code like. A uh, professional programmer or coder. So that's our aim, and we will fulfill it with your wish only. Like we are in now day three, and we we know almost a lot of things like this functions. Next day we'll be learning our classes and objects. Uh, our classes and objects. I have written like I have made the syllabus for you guys. Okay. So classes and objects, then we will be learning about OOPs, concepts of OOPs, a uh, few properties of OOPs. So each and everything, that's a basic which we will be covering and after that we will be, I will be having great announcements after that. So stay tuned and follow, please follow my channel for that and if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And if you like this kind of contents and if you want your friends to know about this kind of contents and if you want to show your friends that how much effort I put in to make this kind of contents even when I am sick or uh, if you want to support me what you can do is you can share this and reach my channel to a lot like all the people who are in need so that I get the maximum number of subscribers and views and uh, my dream of reaching 2000 subscribers very soon uh, happens, happens very soon. So, thank you uh, and thank you for your wishes which I received over social media, a lot of wishes I received. Thank you for that and uh, thank you again for bearing with me. I hope I was able to clear each and everything. So, we will meet on Wednesday again. Uh, it, it was your host Shubhada Geek signing off. Bye bye.